Hi, right, my friends. I'm going to ask for some audience participation. Um, where do you live? I'd like to know. You don't have to tell me the town if you want, but uh, where you live, the state in particular, how much it costs, what people need to be aware of in your neck of the woods. Um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, where to retire, you know, where, uh, where do I think about retiring. I think about it all the time, man. I've always been, I just love maps, always have found maps of, uh, of interest. I'm kind of weird like that. But not only have I found maps of interest, I like Google Maps where you can go down there, Google Earth. Uh, I just, I, I, I'm fascinated by all that stuff. And, you know, I've talked to many people. A good guy, John, moving to Portugal, a number of people moving to, uh, you know, the Latin America, Thailand, Philippines, whatnot. But also people moving from Maryland to Florida, uh, from Virginia to Florida, the villages and whatnot. I think it's all great. And other people moving to Texas, guys moving from California up to uh, was it Oregon or Washington, something like that. A guy moving from Washington to Arizona. Um, I don't think there's as much, was it word, transient, uh, migrating population as you would think. Uh, but anyway, I'd love to hear what your, if you had an audience in front of people and they're saying, you know, let's just say you're from freaking Kentucky, like my man I was talking to yesterday from Kentucky and, uh, and you're going to stay there. Someone's like, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Kentucky. What would be things, and I don't want any racial crap or anything. I don't care about any of that. I don't want Democrat. I don't want any of that. I just, I don't, I want more from a financial planning perspective. What are some of the things that you should you would tell, I don't know, your brother or something like that. Look at that sunset. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that, dude. Damn, how could you... How do these Antifa people and these liberals... I just don't get how angry people are. I guess listen to Bill Burr right now. He's uh, Some video of some Yale students screaming at the professor because the professor didn't know this one girl's name. And Bill's like, dude, you, you live in America and you're at Yale. What, what do you possibly have to be angry about? It's Affluenza, my man Michael Ramsden, R-A-M-S-D-E-N, Michael Ramsden. I think he's with R-Z-I-M, the Ravi Zacharias uh, International Ministries, which is right here in Georgia, right uh, actually across the street from my wife's office. I'd love to be a fundraiser one of these days when I have enough money uh, for one of these groups because Ravi, his stuff is fantastic. Or like they got Grove City College up there in Pennsylvania, you know, free minds, free markets, Christianity. They're not afraid of that. I love it, man. I think that's fantastic. And unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people know how to do proper uh, the fundraising where you say, like, I'm not I'm not saying I'd like to do that in lieu of this. No, nah, it's just it'd be something I think I'd be good at because you say, look, here's the IRS. Here's your charity. You want to keep capitalism, free markets. You want to keep religion front and center. Because uh, all the left, you know, the freaking, what's his name, uh, Pete Steyer, whatever his name is, that dude, Tom Steyer. All the hedge fund managers, they're all rich. They all got money. They're all, <laughs> very few are, are Christians, let's put it that way, or Muslims. Let's put it that way, too. All these rich guys are all atheistic, for sure. And, uh, and left-wing crusaders, George Soros and whatnot. And, uh... Which is why, again, going back to my estate tax thing, why well, I'm comfortable. That's what it was. My man Fred said, I'm a commie. I should run with Elizabeth Warren because I believe in an estate tax. I just chuckled at that. But anyway, I got off that tangent. So Bill Burr is like, dude, you live in America. You go to Yale. Look at that. You see that? <laughs> just like. Uh, thank you, Lord, for creating your beauty. We all come from our primordial soup. <laughs> I always just chuckle. We have 95% of the DNA is... What, a dog? Is that what it is? 92% of the DNA of a dog. And so we also have 75% of the DNA of a banana. So, prove to me we came all from a primordial soup that was, what, the Big Bang? <laughs> I mean, it's the silliness of that argument, just intuitively, that you think you have the proof of this, and yet you don't. And the challenge that makes you the crazy one. <laughs> just laugh, man. You can't challenge Darwin. How dare you channel challenge Stephen Hawking or Richard Dawkins? These are individual human beings. They don't know any more than you and I when it comes to this stuff, because they weren't there. They didn't see it. 
They have some what they think is theoretical hypothesis. They don't have any evidence of this stuff. It's crazy, man. <laughs> but to have an open mind to say, eh, I'd like to hear the other side. It might be interesting to dive deep in this. I'm the crazy one. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I don't know. Very, very comfortable with that stuff. I don't know. And if you don't know, you're willing to be educated, but you're willing to see the other side of the story too. <sighs> Again, the argument, always one piece of advice, my friends, the more hostile, angry, and vitriol in, a, in any kind of debate is, the more you know their debate is based on thin ice, is weak. People are confident in their knowledge of what they're talking about, don't need to get hostile. I like that, they just don't. Uh, they don't need to be, you know, drop the bombs of uh, all the mainstream peer reviews say this. They, you don't need that because that's uh, appeal to authority. And we've had ample evidence of appeal to authority leading to horrific things. So if you're going in your life and you're just wondering and you're curious, and hopefully you are curious by nature, you need to be, you should be, just remember that if you're looking at a debate of anything, be it index funds versus non-index funds, anything. Uh, be it whole life insurance versus buy term and invest the rest, whatever. The more hostile the argument is, the more ad hominem attacks, the more that side's weak. It's literally that, uh, that simple. And the more you should say, huh, why are these guys so hostile? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to be the hostile if the argument is so inherently obvious and, and uh, non uh, and, and not be, and beyond challenge. That's the way I've always done it. You just look at any kind of debate. Who is the side that is uh, on the polemic? Polemic means the attack. Who is yielding the attacks? And who is just trying to be, yeah, hey, let's just debate this. And you take the side of the folks that are calm and wanting to debate, not the side of the people who are yielding the knives. Uh, because that is the, uh, that's the bullies. That's a tyr tyrannical side for sure. All right, so let's go back. Forget the primordial soup. Fundraising. What is your experience in your state? I love to hear your comments here. Put it in the show notes. Say, I live in Georgia. In Georgia, once you're 65 years old, you get 65000 per taxpayer of a tax-free income. So Charlotte gets 65000 as we sit here today, your old buddy Josh gets 65000 so that means 130000 bucks. and once we're 65 is tax-free. I bet a lot of people were not aware of that. I wasn't even aware of that until someone told me about that. Uh, my friend Jamie, who's a CPA and also a CFP, who I'd love for her to do what I'm doing because she is fantastic, but uh, you know, she's got a good gig now. Well, I always say, Jamie, please. There's so many people that need a good financial planner who are willing to pay you a decent uh, fee for it, too. But she's, uh, she's got a good gig right now, and I'm hoping that gig will, uh, uh, at some point, she'll, uh, she'll see the light. But we shall see. Anyway, Jamie told me about that a few years back, and I was stunned because I did not know that. It just goes to show you're always forever learning, my friends. Learning never stops. If you think it does... You're being silly, arrogant. 49 years old, I'm still learning. Hell, I learn from you guys all the time. I probably learn from you guys more than you learn from me, to be perfectly honest with you. Which is, uh, which is cool. It's, uh, we're going both sides of this, if that makes sense. Anyway, so you live in uh, Georgia. Again, no state income tax if you're over 65 and you have uh, uh, $130,000 if you're married finally jointly. Obviously, in Tennessee, there's no income tax. There's a pretty high sales tax. But what else do people need to be aware of? How much does it cost for ut utilities? Kilowatt hour. What's the, 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 uh, the cost per kilowatt hour, for instance? What's it like in the winter in terms of heat? I mean, I don't care where it is. Maine. You know, I'm from Maine. I can tell you what I was back when going on 40 years now. 35, yeah, 35 years now. But things have changed. Texas, I lived in South Texas. For me, it's just too hot, man, for sure. Air conditioning was always running in the summertime, always running. Can't open the windows. Uh, I didn't like that at all. 
In the winter time, it's okay, but it's awful gray. I'm not gray brown because it's not much foliage, not much greenery. You know, ci citrus, not citrus, cypress, cypress trees. But man, going up to a uh, uh, Cordillera Ranch up, was it 46? I think, yeah, 46. Going up towards Comfort, <sighs> man, Kerrville, <sighs> freaking gorgeous, dudes. I'm sure it's god awful expensive nowadays. Freaking gorgeous in that hills country. Oh man, it's just it's fantastic. Uh, Texas, though, the uh, uh, property taxes are pretty high because again, there is no state income tax, but you pay for it in property tax. And I would suggest, as I always do, I'd rather have a low property tax and a state income tax than vice versa. So I'd rather live in Georgia in that regard than Tennessee, even though Tennessee is not a good example because they have low property taxes too. But you live in Georgia, you get moderately low property tax, especially if you don't live in Fulton County like I do. You know, hell, you live one, you know, two, three miles over Cherokee County, paying about half, if not a third of what I'm paying. And again, income tax is minimal uh, once you're uh, over 65. With that said, if you're working in Georgia, you know, like we, my wife and me, I mean, if income tax is not cheap here, man. I think it's five. I think it's even higher than Massachusetts, four and a half. So some guy was telling me Mass, he said, not, he was talking about the income tax, but some other stuff that uh, Massachusetts taxes you on, which is nuts, on top of the lack of freedom in terms of your ability to own firearms and whatnot. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. I think people would appreciate that. You know, like what are some of the pros and cons? Again, I'd say if I had to do it again, I'd go over one county over to Cherokee County, you know, but as is our want, you always go to where the schools are the best, quote unquote. It doesn't mean anything, man. I'm telling you, for you looking to raise children or got kids, you're like, we're going to move, but we're going to move to where the schools are the best. I'd highly suggest you think again. It just doesn't mean anything. Schools are schools, man. Based on test scores, that makes it the best. Nah. Anyway, so put it in the show notes, would you? You live in Oklahoma. You know, what's some there's thoughts you'd have to want to say about Oklahoma that people should be aware of? You know, whatever. Hawaii. I don't care. And, uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, we live in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Not very many Republicans in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Um, but it's very, it's, it's people are not, there's some weirdos there, I will say. I don't want to get too deep in that. There was some, I was like, that's kind of odd. But uh, the people are freaking, we, you know, our neighbors are fantastic. They remind me a lot of being back in Maine. Actually, my one neighbor... Uh, he was a retired Marine. He and I and the guy next to him was retired CIA. So we we're probably the only conservatives in town. It's pretty funny because he was Spanish. And <laughs> it was just uh, it was just good people. It was, uh, it was good how to feel. So, you know, most people liberal there. But we just, it was, we had a great, uh, a great sense of community in Haddonfield. I liked it a lot, other than the fact New Jersey's so doggone expensive and very, very unfriendly towards the Second Amendment and uh, and other and just taxes. They just oh, they eat you alive in taxes. But it was it was a nice town, man. You know, I could take the train into Philly, just walk through downtown. We walked through school, uh, walked to school. It was it was cool. The beach is an hour and a half away, and New Jersey's got some nice beaches too. It was nice. Um, I just, you know, couldn't take the property tax and the, uh, the lack of uh, firearm ownership, that's for sure. Uh, we live right next to Camden, and a lot of people say, oh, there's going to be a lot of crime. I didn't, we didn't have any issue. I mean, literally, Camden is right next to us, and uh, Camden folks stayed in Camden for the most part. There's always be a couple ragamuffins running around, but uh, for the most part, it was, it was no big deal. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, the hipster place at Collingswood was building up pretty nice, one street over. That was kind of like a, a town that had seen better days, but now started to get gentrified. That was pretty, tons of restaurants, train stop right there. Um, that was pretty cool. Collingswood was a nice place. All right, we, uh, we'd go down there for, for dinner and stuff, Charlotte and me. Um, I, I wouldn't raise my kids there necessarily. Uh, the schools weren't great, but it was, it was fine. Um, I don't want to say I want to raise my kids there. I don't know. At the end of the day, I just, uh, Haddonfield was, was such a good, everyone loves Haddonfield. South Jersey, you know, if you go even south in New Jersey, that's what they call the uh, the redneck part of New Jersey. 
which is pretty cool. I mean, definitely a more conservative group of people. They got the nuclear power plant down there. Um, cheap cost of living relative to uh, the Philadelphia area of South Jersey. And this is way down. I guess it's Burlington County or something like that. And uh, that was, uh, we would have uh, bought there if we didn't find our house in Haddonfield. It was fine. You can't take a, tra- I guess, well, you can't really take a train into Philly. You have to drive to the, the stop and take it. But it was fine, absolutely. You know, definitely in the rural area, country. Nothing wrong with that at all. North Jersey does nothing for me. That's where my sister lives. No, they can keep that. Nothing for me up there. Even though if you go out to like Sparta, stuff like that, it's freaking gorgeous, man. I mean, it's, it's just it's so expensive. And, uh, and the traffic is immense. But I mean, you go out to Sparta, you know, through that, like the Tappan Zee Bridge area, going into New York, it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. There's no other way around it. It's just, it's, uh, it's insanely expensive out there. I, I don't know how retirees afford that for sure. Uh, my friend Mary lives in Connecticut. And, uh, you know, Connecticut's got a lot going for it, just beauty of nature. I don't know anything about Connecticut other than it ain't cheap. I know that for a fact. But, you know, can a normal family get by at some of these places? I think Connecticut's a nice state. Nutmeg state. You know, obviously it's liberal for the most part. But, I mean, man, you got to, like... I don't know, like the western, northwest part of Connecticut. Pfft. It's like a beautiful, man. Beautiful. I don't know that much about Connecticut. Just going through 84. It was 84? When I go up to Maine, uh, it's 84 to 81, I think. So we take the GW Bridge to go through New York, or sometimes I take Tap and Z, whatever it felt like. And then you take, you go through Hartford, I think. You take 84. I can't remember. But anyway, you take 84, 81. It wasn't 81, I don't think. 78. I mean, well, you take some highway through Hartford and you go through uh, some of these towns are just freaking gorgeous. You know, that's Connecticut. Um, but it, it's crazy expensive there is my understanding. I don't know. Maybe Mary can chime in. Maybe it's not. Uh, we got to know we got some folks who live in Maine. We got some folks who live in Mass. We got some folks who live in uh, New Hampshire. Lots of folks live in Texas. Uh, where else I got? Most California IA. Uh, for sure. And I know people say, I'm getting out of here. But, you know, it's got to be more than just you're getting out. Why? I mean, I'd like to know, it's, you know, if they violate your freedoms. They, uh, I get that. Uh, they can't keep, uh, you can't live on a just a regular, uh, you know, uh, 60000 a year income. Can you make it by there in Connecticut? California, IA? I don't know. Bend, Oregon? Like I said, I've always been interested in Bend, Oregon for some reason. I don't know why. Just Bend, Oregon, for some reason, always jumped out at me. And I think they used to have my, I, used, I love minor league baseball. I've always followed it. I always liked, uh, back in the day, all the minor league teams, the Toledo Mud Hens and stuff like that. But, you know, they had the Pacific Coast League back in the day. I, I think they still do. They used to have the American Association, Pacific Coast League, and the International League for AAA baseball. I think the American Association disbanded and kind of, they went into both those two remaining leagues. But I just used to remember like Stockton, Bend, Oregon. And I don't know why, but Bend, Oregon has always kind of appealed to me. Kind of like Colorado Springs. Then I went to Colorado Springs and I was disappointed. And I was like, yes, yeah, all right. Um, I always want to go to Calgary, though. I tell you, man. I don't know what it is about Calgary. Colorado Springs and Calgary. So I rode off Colorado Springs. I've been there and it didn't do much for me. But Calgary is kind of like the, uh, the northern version of Colorado Springs for me, I think. Still got some green, still dry, high desert, right? Mountains and stuff. They got that place, Banff, or whatever it's called. Never been there, but I always like the Calgary Stampeders, is like a rodeo town, except in Canada. Pfft, that sounds awesome, man. You know, the Calgary Stampeders, and obviously they got my, uh, not my league, major league hockey team, the Calgary Flames. And uh, I've always been intrigued by Calgary. So we got Colorado Springs, Bend, Oregon, Calgary. Where else am I intrigued by? Uh, what's that place, Coeur d'Alene in Idaho? That's always been interesting to me. Just because it looks freaking gorgeous. I know some people live out that way. And uh, let's just say it's freaking wonderful. Uh, Boise never did much for me. I don't know why. That, that's, that never appealed to me. Salt Lake never did anything for me. You know, Nevada, nothing there. Tahoe area is pretty nice, but I don't know why. It just never had much of appeal. Let's see. Now. Central, uh, 
Jasper, Indiana, Columbus, Indiana. That looked like a nice place. Cheap, middle of the country. Got a nice little house for cheap. Uh, looks like the moderate climate, not because it's like southern Indiana, I think. So it's not too, I mean, it's going to be colder than it would be in Georgia, but not too cold, I think. I don't know why Columbus, Indiana just jumped out at me. Jasper, Indiana, I think is another one. Where else? We got uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, the area around Charlotte, yeah, a little bit too, uh, South Carolina doesn't do much, you know, Greenville's freaking awesome, but I just couldn't see myself living there, um, you go up through Spartanburg and whatnot, all the way from like Greenville through Charlotte, it doesn't do much for me, um, Western North Carolina, love it, um, I couldn't stand Asheville, I couldn't take it there, um, but that area is just freaking awesome. You know, going up through Tennessee, Johnson City and stuff. And you know, I had a chance to move up there a couple years back. And it's just, I, I couldn't do it. It's just too, uh, it just is too small. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's pretty cool up there. Because Johnson City, they have, you know, Kingsport, Johnson City, the whole area up there. They got like six short season rookie, not rookie leagues, but single A uh, minor league teams. These tiny little towns. It's actually pretty cool. It's old school baseball. I thought that was pretty cool, but uh, just a little bit too small for me. I need, I like double, I like a city that's big enough to have like a double A team, like Chattanooga is like perfect. Um, then we got over here, Rome, Georgia. Yeah, that doesn't do much. Huntsville, Huntsville is another area I like a lot. Huntsville is freaking awesome. Uh, we've gone through Pearl, Mississippi, that area down in Jackson. That didn't do much for me. If you go north, uh, the Rolling Hills, like where what's his name is from, Elvis. That's that's freaking pretty, pretty man. That's for sure. You know, again, East Texas, I like. Florida doesn't do anything for me just because, uh, I you know I just don't think the homeowners stuff is going away anytime soon. For the homeowners insurance, doesn't do much. Eastern part of North Carolina, yeah, that freaking yeah, I like that. I think my uncle bought a house out there one time, not that long, you know, a couple ten years or so ago. I think we went to wherever the Wright brothers are. That was pretty nice. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, let's see. In Virginia, basically the whole state of Virginia, you just carve out anywhere from like Warrington North. But man, you got west of Virginia, like western Virginia, out seven area towards uh, like Loudoun County. Freaking Berryville. Oh, man. I love it out there. That is just, I tell you, man, I'll never forget getting out of the Army. And coming back one time from a, uh, it's coming through. I had a friend who lived up in Frederick, and it's come back. We went. I think I stopped to see her and a couple of my buddies were there. Like it was all we we're all just hanging out. She was a, a friend of my. She was like boy girlfriend of one of my friend. I can't remember what. Anyway, it was a bunch of friends I knew in the army was hanging around this girl's house up in Frederick. And I, kind of, I think I stopped in there to see them all. Was for, was going back to Virginia when I just got separated from service. I don't remember if I'm getting my dates mixed up, but I just remember come back from Frederick, and instead of taking the uh, the 270 going through D.C., I took a different route to go through uh, that Leesburg, uh, you know, Point of Rocks, Maryland, the western part of Virginia, Berryville. Pfft, man, you get through that, you're just like, oh, friggin' gorgeous, man, gorgeous. Maryland, I like, you know, western Maryland, C Cumberland, and all that stuff is freaking gorgeous. A little bit too small for me, you know, and then you go through a uh, and down by Antietam and stuff like this, Antietam, Gettysburg, Gettysburg, Antietam's Virginia. You know, that area of Maryland, that's nice, man. But, uh, you know, Maryland is. Don't know much about Delaware. You know, they got Rehoboth Beach, obviously. I do know Delaware is very friendly from a tax, income tax and real estate tax perspective, absolutely. I just don't know much about it. Um, it's a small state. I've driven through it a million times a Sunday. PA, Central PA has always been appealing to me. You know, Harrisburg. I know Harrisburg is, is falling apart, but, you know, the Hershey area and all that, pff, I can handle that, I think. Um, don't know a whole lot about Pittsburgh. I've been to Pittsburgh a number of times. Well, not a number, a couple of times. And I like the city. It seems a little bit too cold for me. That's probably the too far north. I, I don't think I could, you know, anywhere north of, like, uh, probably Hershey, I probably couldn't do that. There's a lot of mosquitoes flying around out here. They love the CO2 I'm spewing out here. It is a whiz. I'm a very sweet guy. How you know? Because the mosquitoes love me. Because I'm so sweet. All right, what else am I yapping about here? Just yapping along. Call me the yapper. 
uh, where else? Never been to Michigan. Don't know anything about Michigan. Been in Minnesota once for like two days, and I went in the middle of the winter time, and I freaking, I, I, I thought Fort Drum was cold. I'll never forget that how cold it was. Oh my goodness, I couldn't handle that. It's funny. I got a number of people who contact me from Minnesota too. I'd say Houston by far and away is the biggest source of my clients, which is which is I mean that one town, not Texas, Houston specifically. I'd say half my clients come from Houston, which is uh, which is crazy. So thank you, YouTube, for hooking me up with Houston folks. Um, uh, Florida, I've had a yeah, number of people from Florida. Maryland and Virginia, I have a number of people from there. Maryland and Virginia, Florida. Let's see, and one in two and three in New York, New York State, four maybe. A couple in New Jersey. I think I've had anyone from Massachusetts. No one from Maine, no one from New Hampshire. So that northern New England, nah. One from Connecticut. Bunch from California and a bunch from Washington State, if you can believe that. Uh, I think I've had two from Washington, D.C. Uh, Georgia. And uh, a couple from Arizona. Oklahoma. And I'm getting eaten alive here, man. They're just coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. Weird. I thought the cool would cool these guys off and kill them off, but not quite. So if you see a freaking skeeter on me, tell me so I can kill that sucker because he's wanting my blood. Um. Anyway, man, Minnesota. This is crazy because I mean, you know, Minnesota's not a huge state, and uh, but I've I've had probably Minnesota's definitely probably my top six. In Washington State, California, Texas. Maryland, Virginia, Florida, Georgia, and probably Minnesota. Isn't that crazy? A couple from Illinois, now I think about it. A couple from Oklahoma. One, two from Kansas. Uh, Oregon. I don't think I've had anyone from Oregon. Washington. Yeah, well, I already said Washington State. Uh, trying to think. What else? New Mexico. Yeah, one from New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, Mississippi, no. I've had a couple from Alabama. Uh, what am I missing here? Pennsylvania. I don't have that many from PA, actually. A couple. I've had a couple from Michigan. Have I had anyone from Hawaii? I had one guy from Hawaii just did a consult with. Maybe two, actually, now I think about it. No one from Alaska. Yeah, well, it's interesting where I've had my clients from. But, I mean, literally Houston, Texas has been, like I said, more than any other state, which is crazy. Dude, I am freaking skeeters, mosquito bugs. Kill me, dude. At least I think. Maybe I'm just being paranoid now. I, I told you a story. If you're still watching this, more power to you. Just me yapping. My uh, stream of consciousness. Anyway, when I was a kid in Maine... You always talk about being a kid in Maine. Because that's me. That's my life, dude. That's what I do. I'm from Maine. Anyway, when I was a kid in Maine, uh, when we lived in this house, it didn't have insulation. And I, my understanding was you had to go to the bathroom outside in the outhouse or something. I can't remember. I, mean, I was literally young. I was probably three or four years old. Well, never forget one night, I was getting eaten alive by mosquito bugs. I ran into my dad and mom's house. I was like, all these people, the, the things are making noises and biting me, ah. Yeah, I was like probably three or four. What my earliest memories. They said, just go back and get under the covers. So I got under the covers and I could still hear those freaking things. Just, you know, what mosquito bugs, the noise they make. I was like, dude, I literally want to kill myself. It was the worst thing ever. I just, I can't remember like if I, I don't remember what happened the next day or anything. I just remember my parents saying, just go and get under the covers. I said, yeah, they're still there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, we used to get these, you know, those like fly trap things, those uh, plastic fly trap things. Oh, we used to get those fly trap things. There'd be like freaking thousand flies on them things. Oh my god, it's disgusting. And I, see, when you're when you're a kid, you don't know. You don't know like what what's normal, what's not. I just remember seeing these flies. There'd be like thousands. Oh, it's freaking gnat. You know, they hang from the ceiling and they kind of stretch out a little bit, like this, uh, almost like a spring, almost. Oh, man. 
<laughs> it's freaking disgusting. But I mean, as a kid, you're like, oh, I'm just, you know, flies flying around and getting trapped. All right, I guess that's all I got. So, what else do I want to say? Not much. <laughs> Not much. I just talked for 30 minutes. That's your old buddy Josh, just yapping. Appreciate y'all being here, my friends. I hope you're doing well in your financial planning. It's freaking absurd that I could be of assistance to you in that regard. I find it incredible. <laughs> I mean, just this guy. And it's not because I'm so smart. I think it's just because I'm curious. And, and curiosity leads you to investigate things that non-curious people do. Don't. You see what I'm saying? And the curious will make you be quote-unquote smarter because you're taking the time to say huh i wonder what if how about that what if this it's not because of stupid iq you know, forget the stupid iq it's just because you're wondering you're you're a curious person and curious makes you say what well, there's a different perspective here i'm not going to listen to the tried and true i want to challenge it challenge the mainstream thought and when you do that, you quickly find you have a lot more knowledge on something that most people do because most people don't take the time to do that. So it's not because I'm a financial planner extraordinaire or I'm so smart guy. It's just I'm curious and I read. So whatever you're interested in, take some time to read it, to look at the other side of the, the thought process, and I guarantee you'll be more attuned in that subject than the vast majority of people. Not because you're so smart, but just because you took the time. I think I'll let you go. We'll see you.